my name is Leon and I'll be talking a bit about some of the native plants out here in the Western Desert. Now, just as we are walking through the gardens, you might see some ripe berries on the trees. What I ask is you just try not to pick them off and eat them. Reason being, growing in the gardens, gardeners could be spraying pesticides on the plant, yeah? Not only that is, we're not the only things that go for these fruits. Could be parasites inside, yeah? So just check the fruits if you're ever out there in the Western Desert and you're gonna eat them, yeah? So, good example. See the one here with the tiny little yellow hole on the top? So you can hand that one around. Yeah, so there's a tiny little yellow hole right there. That's where the wasp laid his larvae inside the fruit uh -huh. and it's now eating the core, yeah? Oh, wow. okay. Yeah, so if you're not paying attention, you pull off the fruit and eat it. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually eating parasites with it for a wasp larvae. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's more protein with the fruit, but most people just don't like the thought of eating that parasite. Yeah? Where do we have it? Well, I just keep handing it around, but this is what it looks like on the inside. Feels like a grape. Yeah. See if there's any little insects inside. Yeah, feels like a grape. There we go, see moving? Nice. Yeah, looks a bit like a normal fig. Now with it, uh, uh, as for what it tastes like, um, this is the only fig I've ever tasted, so I can't really Aww. compare it to the other ones, yeah? Yeah, but other than that, if you get it ripe, it's nice and sweet. Yeah. The ones on the ground, local ladies, Arnangu, what they'll do is they collect it and they actually mix it with our bread out here. So there's a good plant, see that one there with the yellow flower? Yep, That's yep. called a grey cassia. There's one growing naturally there right next to the road. Usually they do get a bit thicker than that, uh, but ladies will collect the seed pods off of it, grind the seeds up on their grinding stone, that creates a powder. With the powder you get that powder, mix it with water, it creates a paste, kind of like peanut butter paste. Get the dried up fruit, mix it with the paste and burn both sides of it, that creates a hard shell. So when you place it in the ash, you bake it and it creates a biscuit bread with a bit of fruit in it. Really good combination, yeah? Oh, there's a muffin that he sells there. It says peanut butter. Peanut butter? Oh, no, not those ones, no. Yeah, so with it, the biscuit bread was more like an Enza cookie, yeah? So hard shell, soft core. Heavy hair is it? Ah, oh, yeah, no, not too bad. Crunchy. Uh, if you ever had damper before, similar to that too, yeah? Yeah, yeah really, really nice. Yeah, so damper, old stockman would go out collecting native seeds, uh, grinding it up and then making damper with it, yeah? Uh, good one, honey. So the widgety bush, really nice. You heard of the widgety grub? Yeah, big white grub lives in the roots of that too, there, yeah? <clears throat> oh yeah, lovely too. Yeah, it's a good protein. Uh, with it eating it raw, it tastes more like a nutty flavour that widgety grub. Eating it cooked is more like an egg yolk. Yeah, but out of that tree there, the widgety bush. So that's an acacia, acacia campiana, related to the waddle family. Notice how it's shaped, it's like a bit of a funnel. That helps it with water catchment, so in the summer months, when we don't get too much water and it rains, all the rain, rain water runs straight down towards the stump of the tree. But as a moth, they call it the cosset moth, well, the goat moth. It's a big moth. You see it up in the Wingery Art Gallery in one of the cages there, yeah? yeah but with it, it um, lays its larvae in the stump. Larvae are wood borers, yeah? So they'll eat the trunk and down through the root. As they're eating the root, the root will swell up and crack. When that cracks, that displaces the soil on the top, yeah? So when the ladies are looking for widgety grubs, they'll look for the surface. When they see it's displaced or split, they know widgety grubs are there. They'll dig down roughly 20 centimeters on one side of the tree, cut off one side of the roots. Yeah, one root, roughly one or two. You can get three out of that one root too, yeah? yeah? But eating it, like I said, it doesn't matter whether it's raw or cooked. Eating it raw, nutty flavor, eating it cooked is more like an egg yolk. But because you're cooking it, you get more of a crunchy skin, yeah? Yeah, most people like that one, yeah? yeah eating it raw, it's a bit of a funny feeling, yeah? Oh, but good tree, this one. It is being attacked by a lot of parasites. You see up the top? You get insect gulls and also mm. mistletoe growing up the top there too, yeah? So not looking too healthy. <clears throat> yeah, so this little one over this side, this is the tea tree. So this is where you can get the tea tree oil from. Uh, with it, oh, if I can get everyone just to move up a bit, so that way we can get some of the people up the back, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so tea tree oil, you find this one in the bottles they sell nowadays, high price stuff, yeah. Yeah, you find it in your first aid kits too, it's a swab. Also with it a cream, used to relieve the pain of burns, but it's a natural antiseptic, this one. Uh, with it, the ladies will grind up the flowers or the leaves on the actual grinding stone. That's how you extract the oil, rub it all over the burn, relieves the pain of the burn. 
And also you get an open cut to a wound, you can clean it out using this one too. Yeah, but you can have a word for that one, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, pretty much used for medicine, that one there, a bit more for food, yeah? <laughs> so you can head over that side now. <laughs> Who's this predator here? Yeah. Yeah. Not in there at the moment. Yeah. <clears throat> if it was a miner, that one, yeah, they'd already be trying to swoop my head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so almost like the magpie. Yeah, so almost like the magpie on the coastal areas. But here, that's he is the worst, the miner. Yeah, he'll swoop at us. But this one here, um, snotty gobbles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> snotty gobble or oh, the mistletoe. Yeah. Yeah. So watch out with that one. It's a very sticky fruit. <laughs> yeah. Birds eat the berries and their digestive system doesn't break down the seed. So when they do their business on the tree, it likes to stick them through there. I don't know if you might have already noticed. Uh, but there's some on the metal bars here. Those are the seeds, yeah? Stick into the actual metal. Birds will eat the berries. Digestive system doesn't break down the seed, so when they need to spread it, uh, they'll swip, swipe their bottom on the tree, stick to the tree. Yeah, sticky, isn't it? Yeah, so, oh yeah. They're really sticky, so you, yeah, there's a reason why they call it the snotty gobble. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, birds eat it, we love it. Uh, it's a natural appetite suppressant, yeah? Yeah, yeah so with it, yeah, we'll eat it. <laughs> yeah, so with it, uh, what we do is it suppresses the appetite, yeah? So you're out there on the sand, June, you can't find much food. Eat a few berries off of this one, yeah? Suppress the appetite, yeah? yeah? Really, really good. But that bird, as I was saying, very sticky seed. Yeah, it's going to come off if you keep wiping it. Yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's how it all gets there. Yeah, that's how it gets there. Yeah, but they do germinate too by themselves until they actually latch onto a plant that'll provide nutrients. Yeah, so you can see them coming off now. Yeah, but other than that, they do draw the nutrients out of the actual tree itself. See that one in the back? The acacia is being attacked by too much. It is killing the tree. Yeah. So hunters, if we see too much on that one tree, we will get rid of them. Uh, so get rid of all of them, except uh, maybe two or three, leave them down at the bottom. Yeah, so leave one down at the bottom, that way easy access for us and also bush turkeys. They like it too. Good bush turkey trap. Yeah. Uh, so they walk into the shrub, eat the berries, but known for not being too smart. Yeah. So instead of actually walking all the way through, going with the grain and the feathers, uh, they'll try to turn around. Not the smartest of birds. Mm -hmm. As they do that, feathers get fluffed up and pushed into the body. Doesn't like it. So to get the feathers back into place, they open their wings over the shrub. What they've done now is they've just gotten vegetation stuck between the wings and the body. Can't close his wings properly, yeah? Moves even more, tangles himself even more. You come back three or four hours later, you've got bush turkey within under that tree. <laughs> yeah, good trap, yeah? yeah? But as for this one here, old man salt bush, as the name states, that has salt on the leaves, yeah? So with it, they feed this one to lamb nowadays. You go to your shop, get your corn-fed lamb. You can also get salt bush fed lamb too, yeah? High price meat. Uh, saltbush flakes, yeah, that fine dining nut that I was talking about, Taliwiru, they use this as a dessert. Saltbush lavash, biscuit served as a cheese platter, yeah, or on a cheese platter, yeah, really nice. Yeah, quite good. Perfect hiding place for the animals. See how there's a big shrub? Mm. Mm. Gawanas, bilbies or snakes will hide under here. So if you hear the rustling under the shrub, you know something's there. Get a piece of bark, start a fire on one side and spook them out, yeah? They think there's a fire coming to them. That's where you have the other hunters waiting on the other side. They come out, collect them, take them home. Good eating. <laughs> but this tree right here, this is the Molga tree. This is one of the most important trees out in the Western Desert for the local people. Uh, so Molga Acacia and Ura. Very hard dense wood. Good for firewood, weaponry, shelter. Kangaroos like to hide under it, as well as honey ants. I like to hide around it. You get bush apples off of the tree and you can use the seeds to make hard seed biscuits. These are a lot of things, yeah? Yeah, but uh, by itself, local people, their local Pitindera language, they call it Wanari, yeah? In a group it's Putti, Mulga shrublands. So if you go out to the National Park, to the cultural centre, and you walk from the cultural centre to Uluru, you'll be walking through a Mulga shrubland. That's where the small marsupials like to hide, kangaroos, because it's nice and shady in that area. So when you see these little orange crystals glistening in the sun, you usually see little ants collecting the sap and they'll take it back down to a main storage ant. Yeah, the storage ant eats so much sap, the bottom swells up, creates a little honey sack. Yeah, we'll collect that ant, pop it in the mouth. Tastes like golden syrup. Mm. 
Yeah. Um, kids don't mind the branches if they see it glistening. They'll just break off the branch and suck it like a lollipop. Sweet nectar, yeah? They're not too bad. Yeah, but I'd rather have the entire honey edge, yeah? <laughs> you eat the ants as well? Oh, you get the elders, yeah? They'll eat it. So sometimes they just don't really want to hold it down, pop it, put it back down. Yeah, they'll just grab a whole handful. Yeah. 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 Uh, so this is a uh, casuarina. Um, Alu casuarina de Cassiniana has a tap you can go down 30 to 40 meters, yeah? So this one directly taps into the artesian table below us, yeah? But uh, more commonly referred to as a shield, yeah? yeah but, uh, lovely trees. This one here, grandmother or grandfather tree. Okay. Yeah, see the young ones, the baby ones out there on the sand dunes that look like a feather duster. Yeah, so in order to conserve, uh, they're not the only things that go for these fruits too. You get um, emus, they love it too. So they swallow the fruit. The digestive system doesn't break down the hard shell. When they do their business out there on the sand dunes, they actually help spread it out. Fire comes through, cracks open that hard shell, and that's when it starts to spread out from there. But uh, local Arnangu, they'll eat the flesh raw, so straight off of the tree, crack it, eat the whole thing, really nice, yeah. Uh, very sweet taste at first. Second stage it goes even sweeter, third stage it tastes a bit fermented, yeah. Uh, so it drops on the ground, you leave it on the ground for a while, goes soft, easier for the elders to eat too, yeah. Their teeth aren't as good as they used to be. Yeah, but really, really nice. This one's starting to branch out now, yeah. Oh. Uh, you get another teenager just here, mum and dad right here. Grandparent just there, yeah? <laughs> oh, yeah? You're looking at the entire cycle of this, uh, yeah, these trees, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah? We usually call those ones feather dusters, yeah? Yeah, so they're really nice. But, uh, yeah, still young, those ones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any questions? Mm -hmm. ah. well, that does bring us to the end of our talk. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.